Welcome everyone, it's lovely to see you all again as we continue our study in the book of Revelation. If you can please turn with me in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16. This is the Lord's Word and it reads, Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go, pour out the seven bowls of God's wrath on the earth. The first angel went and poured out his bowl on the land, and ugly and painful sores broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it turned into blood like that of a dead man. And every living thing in the sea died. The third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. Then I heard the angel in charge of the waters say, You are just in these judgments. You who are and who were, the Holy One, because you have so judged, for they have shed the blood of your saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. And I heard the altar respond, Yes, Lord God Almighty, true and just are your judgments. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and the sun was given power to scorch people with fire. They were seared by the intense heat and they cursed the name of God who had control over these plagues. But they refused to repent and glorify him. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast and his kingdom was plunged into darkness. Men gnawed their tongues in agony and cursed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, but they refused to repent of what they had done. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Then I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. They are spirits of demons performing miraculous signs and they go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them for the battle on the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come like a thief. Blessed is he who stays awake and keeps his clothes with him so that he may not go naked and be shamefully exposed. Then they gathered the kings together to the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne saying, It is done. Then there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it has ever occurred since man has been on the earth. So tremendous was the quake. The great city split into three parts and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the great and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. Every island f fled away and the mountains could not be found. From the sky, huge hailstones of about a hundred pounds each fell upon men, and they cursed God on account of the plague of hail, because the plague was so terrible. God bless the reading and the hearing of his word to us, sobering words. Let's pray. Lord God, I pray that you will guide our thoughts as we focus together on your precious word. May today remind us of our salvation and drive us to live it out in a way that attracts others to you. 
Lord, as we hear your word, give us patience. May today's teaching give us a burden for the lost. May it sustain us through difficult times. May it calm us in the storms of life. May we rest in the certainty of your return. To the glory of King Jesus, may his name be praised, honoured and worshipped. Amen. 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 Right, so in Revelation 16, judgment has come. Uh, the seven bowls of God's wrath has been poured out. Now I'd like you all to imagine a little stove fire in the middle of this room. Just a little fire like this, consisting of all the world's hate towards God, all the world's persecution towards his people, all the other religions and worldviews who hate God and his church and are trying to burn out this room. This little stove fire is filled with tyrannical leaders, militant atheist philosophers, all that greed, all that pride, all that lusts of the flesh, all that hate, all that racism, vice and addiction, your abusive and cynical neighbour who thinks you are crazy for coming to church on a Sunday, let alone a Bible study and prayer meeting like this. Your best friend who has been so horrible to you because you have started to take Jesus seriously. Imagine all of this hatred that we face as Christians, global hatred and local hatred in this little hot angry fire in this room intent on burning it down. Well in Revelation 16 we read that God brings out seven giant bowls of water and extinguishes out this fire. In fact he floods the entire room. Amen? The fire is gone, all gone, all of that hate, all that anger towards God and his church, extinguished. Pshh. Gone as easy as that. All animosity towards our saviour throughout human history, washed out in an instant. That's amazing, isn't it? And we have here yet again, very exodus type language that takes us back to the plagues of egypt verse two we have disease verse three and four the waters turn to blood uh, verse 13 a plague of frogs can you see the parallels but these events here are far worse than the localized plagues in egypt these are utterly catastrophic global events that include the burning out of the sun in verse 8 and verse 17 earthquakes that shake the whole earth earthquakes that no human has experienced or seen before an extreme thunder and extreme hail the world as we know it has come to an end here the exodus type language, as we've discussed before in previous studies, symbolises the removal, the, the redemption of God's people from this judgment. This judgment that is for the world that has rejected God. And uh, we must remember this when reading these events. They do not affect us. Why? Because we're Christians. These events are not for us. Amen? Mm -hmm. 
These are righteous judgments for all those who have rejected the grace of God in this church age. Those who, verse 2, have the mark of the beast on them. Those who in the church age chose to deny the God of life. Here in chapter 16, they get what they've asked for, which is death. What we read here is the world without the life-giving, gracious and merciful power of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. This is what the world would look like without God's grace sustaining it. Utter chaos, utter tragedy, utter destruction. Now people may read Revelation chapter 16 and think, how can a loving God do such a thing? And there is no denying that this is God's work. In verse 1, he commands it all to happen. How can a loving God do such a thing? Well, friends, a loving God desires to put an end to all evil, yes? But this creates a problem for each one of us, doesn't it? Because we are all capable of evil, are we not? We have all sinned, haven't we? So to remove evil from this world, God will have to also remove us. He would not be a loving God if he didn't remove us. But this obviously pains him because he is a loving God and we are made in his image. He loves us. He does not want us to be apart from him. He does not want us to live in sin. So he came. He really came here to rescue us. He came in the flesh so we would be without doubt of his existence. He came and he showed us how to live, how to love, and he brought his kingdom to earth. He showed us another way, a way of love, a way of forgiveness and peace and reconciliation. And what did we do to him? We tortured him. We killed him. And for two millennia, he has sent people out into the world to continue proclaiming his message. That through the cross, and only through the cross, all can come. All of you can come and be washed and be cleansed from sin and reconciled to God and to each other. That's the good news of the gospel, isn't it? In the cross, you can shelter from God's wrath that is to come and enter into a relationship with him and have eternal life. Such is God's love and patience is that he has held out his hand for millennia so that all can come and know his mercy and avoid what we've read here in Revelation 16. I do not wish to get into the politics of the Gaza Strip, so I'm going to give this analogy as um, unbiasedly as possible. Israel, Palestine. Hamas sends rockets into Israel. Israel retaliates with bombing raids that target the homes, the offices, the factories, places where the leaders of Hamas live, meet, plan and store their weapons. The issue is that they, they do all of this stuff in heavily built up areas surrounded by innocent civilians. So the IDF 
the Israel Defence Forces, what they do before they retaliate with, with their bombing raids, is they drop flyers into the area, saying that that area is a target, get out. They advise people on the ground to evacuate. They also inform the media, TV, radio, that this quadrant is going to be bombed. They send out various alarms. They even phone the residents to say that that area is going to be hit at a certain time. Get out. And then finally, about half an hour before the bombing raid, they do something called roof knocking. Have you heard of roof knocking? So what they do is they send down non-explosives or, or low yielding devices like a smoke bomb or a flare into that area that is about to be hit as a final warning for the locals to, to evacuate. Then half an hour later, fire and destruction comes. Friends, we live in a broken and evil world and our selfishness, our greed, our pride make us a part of the problem. Unlike the innocent civilians in Palestine who were asked to leave their homes before the bombing started, our rebellion to God, our sins, makes us Hamas in this analogy. We are the enemy and we deserve what's coming to us. Amen? But through his word, God is gracious. Through trumpets and seals and bowls of water, through prophets and apostles, and through the witness of the church, God has wrote endless love letters to the people of this world. He has phoned us, he has raised the alarms, he's knocked on our doors, warning after warning after warning humanity has had. He calls us to flee the area, run to the cross, take refuge in the Lord God Almighty. For verse 7, his judgments are true and just. Verse 15, look, I come like a thief in the night. By surprise he is coming. In a moment, these events that we read of in Revelation 16 will happen. He tells us beforehand to flee to the rock of ages and take refuge. We're told to run to Jesus so that we can be spared. We have to be ready for this day, this day, this horrific day for those that have the mark of the beast, Revelation 16. We have to be prepared, we have to be ready, and we have to prepare our loved ones for it. We have to do all we can to warn the people. We have to go out in the belief that today is the day of salvation, and we must be bold in our witness to them, to give them the truth of Christ, so they can be spared the horror of what is to come. Each day is one day less of God's grace. The clock's ticking. God's amnesty for sinners is running out. I want us to pray for the outreach of this church. Amen.